2017 has been a good year for the global economy. World GDP is estimated to have grown by 3.8%, significantly higher than the 3.2% registered in 2016. This is the strongest pace of expansion since the rebound from the global financial crisis in 2010. All indications are that 2018 will be another good year. Most of the world's major economies are expected to continue strengthening over the course of this year. The IMF expects growth in 2018 to be even better than 2017. A striking feature of the global economy is how subdued inflation has been despite broad-based economic expansion and highly accommodative monetary policies. Many analysts have characterized the current configuration of healthy growth, low inflation, and easy financial conditions as a Goldilocks scenario, a global economy that is chugging along not too hot, not too cold. But as David Skilling reminded us recently in an article, the Goldilocks story is not complete without the three bears. The absence of the three bears does not mean that they do not exist. They could return any time. There are unseen risks out there that we ignore at our peril. Each of us will have our own list of three bears. Let me share with you what I see as the three bears that might return to spoil Goldilocks' happy stupor. My papa bear is inflation. Mama bear, protectionism. And baby bear, financial instability. Let me start with Papa Bear, inflation. On conventional wisdom, he should be making an appearance by now. So whenever central bankers gather these days, these, this phenomenon of missing inflation is often the main topic of discussion. Why has Papa Bear inflation been missing for so long? The first and simplest explanation is that the headline measure of unemployment may be understating the level of slack in the economy. There may also be quite some slack in the labor market that may not be fully apparent. A second reason for low inflation has to do with the effects of globalization. And the international outsourcing of production appears to have dampened the pricing power of labor and hence wage growth. Third explanation for why inflation is low is technology. The spread of e-commerce has been eroding the monopolistic power, pricing power of traditional retailers and wholesalers of goods and services, the so-called Amazon effect. But I think it is premature to declare the Phillips curve dead. The structural forces that I described earlier could well be having a one-off effect on prices rather than a continuing dampening effect on inflation. The disinflationary effects of globalization, for instance, may not persist for much longer. Technological change may still have some legs to run and its disinflationary effects may persist for a while longer. But will they be strong enough to offset the short-term inflationary pressures from tightening cyclical conditions? For investors, inflation is easily the biggest bear to watch because monetary policy could tighten at a quicker pace than expected by the markets. Markets are currently pricing in only about three Fed rate hikes to end 2019. So it may not take much to unsettle the markets. Equities, whose valuations are premised on low discount rates, 
could sell off in a hurry. Let me now turn to Mama Bear, protectionism. Protectionism was the biggest fear this time last year. There were populist backlashes against globalization, represented most vividly by the results of the UK uh, referendum on Brexit and the US presidential elections. The great relief of 2017 was that this risk did not materialize sufficiently to threaten the global economy or financial markets. Protectionism can do much harm to the global economy because its reach extends beyond the flow of goods and services, but also to the flow of capital and technology. Large countries have been toughening restrictions on foreign acquisitions and the flow of technologies. We will do well not to get complacent about the return of Mama Bear because the underlying causes for populist anger and support for protectionism are deeply rooted. The risk remains that some countries may erect trade and investment barriers and others may do so in retaliation. And finally, the baby bear, financial instability. A financial crisis is a sure way of disrupting economic growth, as we saw nine years ago. What is the risk now? The risk of financial instability is not small. This is mainly due to the buildup of leverage in recent years. High leverage is a risk factor for financial instability. I spoke earlier about how an increase in interest rates in a high leverage environment can create debt servicing problems. Now, if these pressures lead to widespread credit defaults, financial instability is usually not far off. Another channel of causation from high leverage to financial instability is through sharp corrections in asset prices, particularly real estate prices. The financial stability risks in the US and China warrant close monitoring, simply because given the size of their economies and their financial markets, not to mention the buildup of leverage in both of these economies. Let me conclude. There are good reasons to be optimistic about growth in 2018. The Goldilocks scenario, at least for this year, is a reasonable baseline view. But we need to be watchful of the three bears who may show up at the front door any time. Inflation, protectionism, financial instability. And of course, there are other creatures in the wild that we must pay heed to. Geopolitical risks like the situation in the Korean Peninsula, the South China Sea, the Middle East. Unlike fairy tales, which tend to have a happily ever after ending, the real world is characterized by cycles of good times and bad times. Let us hope and work for the good times, but also prepare for the bad times. And the best way to prepare for bad times is to avoid excesses and build up healthy buffers during the good times. Thank you very much, and I wish everyone once again a very good year ahead. Thank you.